Let me get this man a shield. A shield? For me? Well, I do declare, Mr. Bozeman. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And that's right, we're back in title template territory. That was weird to say. Never mind. Let's just check out some requests. So a whole bunch of you have been bugging me for a Black Panther title template. So that's what we're doing today. Now in order to complete this, you need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and download the pack. But before we get into the template, I just want to take a moment to give a big shout out to VFX Artist. He not only sent me the Black Panther font, but he gave me the idea to use Sabre to create those lines at the start of the template. Thanks to him commenting on my work in progress stuff, I checked out his tutorial in Element 3D. So by all means guys, check out his channel by clicking the card up here. And once again, thanks for your help. Now let's get started. Okay guys, here we are After Effects, and as you can see, we've got our template all rip raring and ready to go. Now there is quite a few steps to get this one looking as cool as this, but we'll go through each one of them. Now firstly, I'll just talk about the uh, Marvel Studios logo. You'll see we've got a Marvel logo template here, and if we open that up, so you can see here we've just got two text files and some lines. It's easy enough to change. If we just change that to, say, Film, and we turn this to Lennon. I'm not going to change that one at all, but it's very easy to customize this. So all I'll do is just shrink this down, reposition film, maybe shrink it down a little bit more. And if we go back to our final, already updated, and all we really need to do to center that is just move it over a little bit, done. Now, customizing the Black Panther text. That's a little bit more difficult, but let's check that out anyway. If we scroll right down to the bottom here, we've got a comp called Black Panther Logo. Now if we click in on that, you can see I've got the Cinema 4D file here, but I've also got a placeholder here so you can just see the final rendered product. I'm just going to turn that off and turn our Cinema 4D file on, which is currently in draft mode. Now to edit this, pretty easy guys. All you need to do is come over to the Cinema 4D file, head up to edit, and hit edit original and this will open up in either Cinema 4D Lite or if you've got Cinema 4D standalone installed it'll open in that. Okay guys here we are in Cinema 4D and this is what our text looks like. We've got a slight camera zoom in and we've got a slightly animated texture and we've got a whole bunch of crap going on that I'm not really going to get into. So let's talk about how we customize this text because there is a little bit to do here. Now if we just click on this change text here one and change this from black to say film looks totally fine right? But, let's just undo that. But, so we want to add a letter. Say so instead of black, we'll go black E. Now you can see that Y has just bugged out something shocking. Now, why is that? Now, that's because we actually have some kerning going on here. Basically, kerning allows you to change the scale and the stretch of all the letters individually. Think of it as the ultimate customizer. So, how do we change this Y? Well, the easiest thing to do is just click on the Y. That way we isolate it. Then I'm going to go out of the multi view mode into front view mode. And we're just going to adjust it in here. So firstly, I'm just going to bring the Y up so that it matches with the rest of them. And then I'm just going to bring it down and maybe just bring it in a little bit. Just make sure it's completely on the level with the other ones. And bring it up a little bit. There. If we jump back at perspective mode, you can see it's all done. Now in all seriousness, that is the hardest problem you'll have to solve in this Cinema 4D template. The same thing goes with Panther. Now you can see here our P is separate from our Anther. That's mainly because I wanted the P to just be a little bit closer than it was if I just typed it out. So if you like, you can just delete that P altogether and just type in your word right here. Now you can see once again, bugs out a little bit. All we need to do is go into our kerning, jump into front view mode, and make our adjustments there. So what we'll do is we'll make this E a little bit smaller, like so, and then we'll make our R a bit bigger. Just bring it down here, and then we'll come over here, and we're going to grab the G. that a bit bigger and overall a bit fatter. And we'll 
bring that down as well. And then it'll just move the whole thing over. So there you have it guys. We do a quick preview. All the animation still works just as well. And we've completely customized that text. Now all we have to do is come over to file and hit save. And that'll auto update in After Effects. Now obviously I'm not gonna use that text. So when we jump back to After Effects, it's just gonna say Black Panther. So don't be disappointed. Okay guys, here we are back in After Effects and hopefully your text has auto updated. And all we're gonna do is set our renderer over here from software to standard final. And hopefully it finally renders. Oh, there we go. Now guys, I'm gonna recommend something right now before we go on with the template, and that's to actually render this out as an individual element. So what I'm gonna do is just hit Control M, then I'm gonna head over to Lossless, down to QuickTime, and I'm gonna make sure my video codec is set to animation, and then we're gonna select our video output and go to channels, RGB, and select RGB plus alpha. And then we'll just hit OK, and all we're gonna do is just render that out. That way, when we add all the other effects on top, we're not increasing our render time by using a 3D model as well. This is just a way to speed up our workflow, guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna pretend I've rendered that out since I already have. I'm gonna turn off our Cinema 4D file and turn on our example, which believe it or not, is actually the Cinema 4D file rendered out. And there's a couple of effects happening here. It's basically just a fine edges and a little bit of color correction, just to give it a little bit of a glow. So if we head back to final, we've got a couple of things going on here. Now firstly, if we scroll down to the uh, Black Panther logo, you can see I've disabled the effects on this one. And that's just to show you what's going on here. So if I hit the spacebar and just do a quick preview, you can see we have a stroke that's drawing an outline of our N, which then moves to the R, and then finally it'll draw a stroke down the P. These are actually all saber layers. So if we scroll up, you'll see these ones called line animation. And if we solo that, you can see it's just a simple line animation like so. Solo the next one. So basically these things just work on a layer mask. So there's the mask right there. And if we unsolo those, the mask is just drawn straight onto our font. And these are actually tracked to move with the font as well. So say you've got a different letter and you want to change this, it's very, very easy. You can either move the mask and it'll just draw that line wherever you've moved it to, or you can delete that mask, grab the pen tool and just draw a brand new one. All the animation settings are all in place and it'll just draw just like it normally would. And with these as well, we've also got some flare files. Now these are just optical flare files. If you don't have optical flares, you can download the project file from VFX Artist. He has all of these flare files rendered out as image sequences, so you can just import those in. I just thought for a change, I'd just use optical flares. But if you don't have optical flares, download his project file, all the flare animations are in there. But if you do have optical flares, you can just see, if I go back down, I turn the effects on, because that's actually fading in our text. You can see each of these flare files corresponds with the start and the end of a stroke. So if you do change the strokes, you are gonna change the position of the flare. So once again, I'm gonna delete that mask and say I'll draw a mask that goes straight down. We'll put this on full just so you can see in better resolution. And all we need to do is go up to the corresponding flare and the easiest way to find it if it's the right flare, turn it off, turn it back on again. Now seeing as though we didn't change the start position of that flare, all we're gonna do is go to our second flare. Yep, that's the right one. Grab the position X, Y, and reposition it. Now if you wanna zoom in, hit Z and zoom in. Just make sure you've got the exact right spot. And that's as easy as that. So you've got two steps after the render, put your strokes in the right place, and reposition the flares. Which of course brings us to our final step. Now if we go all the way down the bottom, you'll see a comp called pattern. If we open that up, it looks really weird, like a whole bunch of dots. But what this basically is, is a rough outline of our text using panther prints. Now if we head back to final, this is what gives our, our text that cool sort of panthery print, believe it or not. I know, crazy, right? So if we jump back into that, you'll see that down the bottom, I've actually got our rendered file imported in. And essentially what I've done is I've taken 
a whole bunch of these panther prints and I've just put them all over each letter and then I've changed the color of them to correspond with each letter so I don't get lost. So essentially, what you'd have to do is just copy your Black Panther logo, bring it in here and paste it down here. And then if your letters are different, you've just got to use these things to populate each of those letters. It's really just as simple as that. Now the black letters themselves, I've just made of their own comp, but if you want to delete that and just use a whole bunch more of these, it's easy. If you want to put more spots on there, just grab one of these, duplicate it, drag it around. Easy as that. Once you've done all of that, it's all pre-animated. So if you go back to final, it'll just all animate as is. Just make sure before you go back to the final comp, you scroll all the way down the bottom and turn that off. Otherwise, there's gonna be some weird crap happening. So if we jump back to final, and say we just solid these, we get a linear wipe revealing the pattern, and then we've just got a little bit of it flickering in the background. So if I unsolo them we check out a preview, that my friends, is the longest title template episode in film learning history. Mm, done. Man, there's a lot of elements in this thing. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. So guys, that's my take on the Black Panther title template from the movie Black Panther. Well, that's kind of obvious. Now I know it's not 100% screen accurate, I mean, when are these things ever, but it's easy to use and it looks cool. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Film Learning, guys. If you did enjoy the episode, please smash that like button, I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you do have a request, leave it down below. And hey, if you are new here, why not hit that subscribe button? And remember, even if you are subscribed, make sure you turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single Film Learning episode. We've got a couple other title templates right here, and an effect down here, I think, as well as a playlist up here. My social media crap is above my head. Twitter, Facebook, check that community tab. And until I see you again, guys, keep learning.